Hello. So, this is what I've I've come to uh, figure out. Talking about Pretty Boy Floyd and Carrie Dahl, no one gives a crap. Nobody. So for the past almost month, I look at my analytics on the on YouTube all the time because I'm really trying to get this down. I talk about other stuff, whatever. It seems to be Randy Rhodes. If I talk about Randy, mainly, most of the time, and something else, I'll get hits. And if I play a Randy Rhodes guitar. If I play... If I don't talk about him, I talk about somebody else, I run a big risk. Now, Motley Crue was hot for a while, but if I talk about Motley Crue now, no one cares. Just like I don't. I don't know what the hell you guys... I mean, I'm becoming the Randy Rhodes dude. I don't want to be the Randy Rhodes dude. I mean, I don't mind. Because at least you'll get truth. You know, other people out there on the net, there's like three, four major ones, and they all have sites, and they all do this and that. No, none of them ever knew him. And they, some of them claim they do or did. Some of them don't. And it doesn't really matter. If you're doing a tribute, who cares? You're doing a tribute because you like the guy and you like the music and, eh, I guess. If you got to meet him, then you probably like, you would like him more because he was always very nice. I never saw him, well, the one time I saw him kind of get upset is when I walked in stoned I did that with Craig, too. Craig was actually more mad than Randy because of, uh, just because. I was just stoned when I walked in on Randy. I was on PCP when I walked in with Craig. So he was furious, but then, you know, saw me tripping balls. <laughs> or he started to lay into me and so he just, I'm like please dude just talk about stuff that's calm I'm tripping out man I mean you, you're you changing right in front of me I'm like what? or he's like I'm changing like what? I'm like your shape and your voice this is really freaking me out so he was cool you know and he even called three times that night see that's the kind of people that Dolores Randy uh Craig Drew, they were all very cool, and when they liked their students or, you know, became friends with them, they were cool that way. Very cool. And that's hard to find, man. I'm telling you. So, what is this? It is a Gibson Les Paul. Uh, a gold top, right? No! So, I made the video of this guitar, I don't know, a couple of years ago when I got it. It's a Washburn uh, Oscar Schmidt. But Oscar Schmidt's apparently some country guy. And he got together with Washburn and put out a line. And they're all mid-range, mid-level guitars. And they're very good. This one I would take... I don't know if I would take it over a, an actual like 60s or a 50, 60, 70 gold top. I'd have to play it. Because, you know, back when Gibson used to hand make their guitars... Every single one was really different. That's why, one, I didn't like them because it took too long to find one that you like. And now they're all the same and they all suck. So there you go. So we're done with that. We've already had the Gibson argument. We've already had all that. Just, I was looking back on videos that recently have been getting hits. And this one got a lot of hits. The first one was a fat, ugly bass player that looked like an old lady that said, You suck! So I went to his site, and he sucked. So, you know. <laughs> so, apparently his goal, or his, you know, thing in life is that he can lay his bass on his belly and play like this and eat a lot. I guess that's his thing. But it was this guitar that was bringing him to the site, and I'm like, Why? What is it about this? I still haven't figured it out. Is there an Oscar Schmidt fan club? I don't know. 
But apparently a lot of people bought these guitars, and some of, some of them liked them, some of them didn't. I like this guitar, but I still haven't had it set up. I haven't given it to my guy. I've just been putting stuff on it, like this, and new knobs, and a, this. A pick guard, or scratch plate, as they call it in England. And a truss rod cover that didn't fit, so it's only the top screw. You can't always go by what you see. Oh, it's a standard. Oh, it's a custom. No, it's... You can put anything on there. You just can't screw all the screws in. And if you try screwing... And this is something I found out might be helpful for you guys. If it has two screws, and you pop that out, and you go ahead and drill two holes to put in a standard, because that's the only one you can get, it massively weakens the neck right here the headstock and it'll pop off way easy how do I know because it happened to me so there you go so don't do that just if you really have to put something on like this like I did just put in the top screw it ain't going anywhere or you, what, you know what do you do that's gonna you know, jar it loose so what I all I want to do to this I think it's a very nice looking guitar I want to get new uh, tuners because these are a little... I don't like them. Um, but they're alright. They would do. Of course, strings need to be... Not, or tens. These are like playing with spider webs. I don't know what they are. And like I said, I haven't touched the pickups. I haven't touched anything. Still. And it's been like a year or two. So it goes right out of tune. Especially today. Because it got up to like 100 degrees here. It's 80 and it's 9 o'clock at night. So, I, I'm sure you're like thinking, well, talk about something, you ass. I can't think of anything. Like I told you, one guy said, D say something about Dio. Okay, I went to see Dio play at the country club in the 80s. And I got backstage, and I talked to his wife, because she was a manager. And I found out she was, was not, she was very much like Sharon, but just not as smart as Sharon. And uh, let's just say she was a lot like Sharon. Poor Dio. But Dio is, Dio is a trip. And I really don't know because I didn't know him. And like I said, Tracy G knows him. So I'm going to call him up and ask him if he wants to do an interview. And if you would like to hear that. Now, he was in Dio's band for nine years. So if you want me to do the Tracy G interview, tell me. That'll give you a lot of Dio information. All I can say is I met him twice. Once when at the country club when he played. And I got backstage because, I don't know, I just would try to walk backstage. And they'd usually let me because they thought, well, he's got to be somebody. I know it sounds stuck up, but it was true. I mean, people automatically thought, well, this guy's got to be somebody, man. So, yeah, go back. Go ahead. Especially Country Club. I don't know why he was playing there. I don't know what it was, what year. Just the, the late 80s. So everything was kind of... So he was playing the Country Club. I don't know who it was with, who it was with or anybody. I think Shafria was the guitar player, which means... <laughs> I'm sure Greg's a nice guy. Not Jafria, but uh, that's the keyboard player. The guy that was the guitarist in that band. Whoever, you know, you'll, you know who I'm talking about. That's the deal that I don't really like. What's that guy's name? He was in Jafria. And Jafria, Je you know, was from the keyboardist from Angel, who flopped into the 80s and tried to make himself a name with that band, I think, Jafria, or whatever the hell it was called. And then he was in a few other things, and... To me, I'm like, dude, you're a 70s guy. Go away. You've had your chance. You blew it in Angel. Because Angel sucked. Angel was put up to be the opposite of Kiss. So there was Evil Kiss and there was nice white Angel. But Angel sucked. The coolest thing about Angel was Punky Meadows. The way he looked. Not the way he played. The way he looked. So there you go. Look at, I don't know where I'm going.
not a bad sounding guitar. And if it had the right strings on, it was... So, yeah, I would take this over uh, Gibson because I paid like 200 bucks for this. Just so you can see. A lot of bolt-on. I've got one brass plate here. And then the one that it came with. Just trying to put everything brass, gold. You know, so that means these got to be at some point. That's all taken care of in these. And then this is already. See, that's gold. Uh, you know, okay, that was a little bit of sucking rhythm. Uh, I'm scared to talk because that part two of Pretty Boy Floyd with Carrie Doll, and to me it was interesting because I was remembering a bunch of stuff about Carrie Doll and stuff went through and da 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 da. I talk for 40 effing minutes and 20 something people watch it. Now I know Robert is going to say, well, you're lucky you get 20. I'm only getting 10. I don't know if he talks that way or not. <laughs> It'd be funny if he did, though. I need to get more than that. And the only reason I'm getting subscriptions or people subscribing to my channel is that Randy Rhodes bootleg. They hear that. And I put, please subscribe if you want more, because I've got more. I've got two more that are just as good as that. And then a, every show you could that Randy played, I have a bootleg of it. Not all of them are great. <laughs> Some of them are really bad. But you get to hear it. And I just wanted to copy. Believe me, it didn't take too long. I hit up like three people, and I had every single show he ever played. In England, here, everything. All the tours. So, uh, if you ever want a copy, but, you know, I say that and people go, what's your address? And I'm like, that. And I go, how much do you want? I, Ten bucks. Nothing. I never hear or see anything, so. Don't jerk me around. You think I got all the time in the world? Probably. So... Thank you.